morning. We welcome you to Covenant Community Church, a United Church of Christ, where we have an inclusive welcome. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, or whom you love, you are welcome here. Amen? Amen. You may notice that I'm not the pastor. I'm much older than he is. In four years, I'll be twice as old as he is. If I were to tell you how old I'll be in four years, you could use algebra to figure out our pastor's age. 2x plus 4 equals whatever number I give you. You thought algebra wasn't useful. It is. So, my name is Deacon Jamie Grimes, and our pastor's on vacation today. <clears throat> he may be watching, but that's okay. Too. So, we welcome you. Let's begin with an opening prayer. Please join me in prayer. <clears throat> Creator God, Mother and Father of us all, giver of life, giver of breath, source of love. Be with us today during our worship service. Help us let go of anything, any worry, any concern, any distraction that keeps us from being present with you in this service. Open our ears and our hearts so that we can hear and also take to heart your advice about life on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, I'll start with the announcement. So um, just a reminder that we're doing life lessons on by Zoom at 7. We're going to be continuing our study of the book of 1 Peter on Wednesdays at 7 by Zoom. It's on the website. You can get there. It's also on Facebook Live. I think there's a way to connect by Facebook. Um, Lighthouse is, we are now in chapter 18 of 22 of the book of Revelation, so if you're interested in studying that on Sunday mornings, we would love to have you. We meet in the room back there or by Zoom at 1030. And this Friday, um, some of you participated um, in the listening campaign by Faith in Action Alabama. There's going to be an unveiling in Montgomery, um, an announcement of sort of the people's agenda that was put together by talking to hundreds of people across Alabama. Um, that's going to be, there's going to be buses going to Montgomery about 3 o'clock. See me if you want to go, or if you want to bring come in by Zoom, you're also welcome to do that. Um, and those are all the announcements that I have. Um, I think JR will be back with us next week. <coughs> If anybody doesn't know what Faith in Action is, feel free to ask Pete and he'll tell you all about it. It's a very, re really relevant group. It's really relevant to our goals and our mission here at Covenant. Okay, did anybody else have any announcements that we didn't make? Okay. So, in addition to the welcome I talked about earlier, I do want to, of course, welcome all of us who are here present. Great to see you. We also especially welcome those who are joining us by Zoom or by Facebook, and also we welcome those who may watch the recording later. We consider all of you part of our family. So let's now uh, think about whose presence we're here in. We're in the presence of God in God's house as a family. We want to recognize God's presence and reverence Him and so I ask you to either at home, if you like, if you know the words, all these are pretty familiar songs. So even those who are joining by social media, I invite you to sing along as well. But we're going to start with, oh, the glory of your presence. Let's stand. <laughs>
If you are joining us by social media, we'll have a moment of communion later in the service, so if you'd like to get an item such as bread or juice or anything like that ready for later, I invite you to do that. And if you are here today and didn't get the wafer and juice, there's some right outside the entrance door. If you'd like to get some, you can do that anytime. So we come now to our covenant affirmation. It's something we brought back recently, something that's very special to a lot of us. If you don't mind, between each line. Because I want to give you a, just a few seconds between each line to think about what you just said. Okay? Because it's a really, really special thing. And it's, um, I think, really relevant to our uh, scripture reading today. So I invite us to say it, but a little slower than usual. So we are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. You may be seated. You're going to hear some of those words a little later. We come now to the time of prayer. A time when we know that God is very present, not that God wasn't present before, but it's almost as if when we get ready to pray, God leans in a little bit more, because God always welcomes our prayer. You know, I think sometimes it's kind of like the parent where the child is off at college, and they wish they would call and just check in and see how they're doing. So this is our check-in time with God. God's always listening, but it's our time when we remember how carefully God is listening and how much God cares about every single prayer, those that we speak out loud and those that we have in the silence of our hearts, even those we may not have words for yet. So we have a prayer book out in the lobby that you're welcome to write prayers in any time. On our website, covenant at covenantbirmingham.org, that would be www.covenantbirmingham.org. We have a Pray With Us link where you can put a prayer there and you can choose whether you want it to just go to the prayer team or whether you want it to be more public than that. So it can be private. You don't even have to put your name or your email address if you choose not to. You can also call the church. You can email the church. That's what I was actually saying before, covenant at covenantbirmingham.org. So there are many ways to get your prayers to us. <clears throat> so... We lift up all those who may need God's help in health care, in employment, in life challenges, in divine guidance for those problems that really only God can help with, and also our thanksgivings, things that God has already done, and we can spend all day doing that, the blessings God has already given us. So let's start with the thanksgivings. Does anyone have anything brief that you just want to give God thanks for this morning? That's awesome. We thank God for that. God is a healer many times. Sometimes the healing's not on this side on earth, but God is a healer. Any other special thanksgivings? Amen. 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 Thank God. Great. Any others? Okay, any special prayer requests? We know God knows the name, the details, but does anybody want to lift any names in particular? Amen. Definitely. 
definitely. You know, beach ministry is very important <laughs> in our church. We minister wherever God calls us. Amen. Any others? No. Okay, and prayers for the family, definitely. Any others? Okay, let's go to God in prayer. God, we know that you're always listening. And we know that you especially treasure the times when we bring you our needs because we're letting you know that we trust you with them. We have needs that we've spoken, but we also may have needs that are unspoken. Those that are here, or even those who are joining by social media, I invite you to raise your hand if you have an unspoken need that you trust God with, but you just haven't spoken it out loud. We know God sees and hears all these prayers. We know that God has all the resources, more resources than we could ever even ask for, and God knows what we need before we ask for it. But we ask it because it's our way of trusting God. <clears throat> of laying our needs before God and knowing that we're not alone in trying to solve these needs or get through these struggles and that we bring our thanksgivings to God. Because by glorifying God, we give witness that God is our helper and our provider. There's no one we can go to who loves us more or knows us better. No one who can supply our needs like you do. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you for being that rock we can depend on. Not to save us from all troubles, but to be with us in all troubles. To be that witness, that strength that we can rely on so that we don't have to feel like we're all alone. So, God, we trust you. We know that you love to hear your children praying, and all of us are your children. There's no exception. There's no prayer you don't hear, no need you don't care about, no tear that doesn't touch your heart. So we thank you for that, Lord. We know you're our gentle shepherd, always available to gently come and lead us. For we do need you to help us find our way down here. We need you to feed us. We need you to be our strength from day to day. You can help us face another day, and we need you to find that way. So let us see.
talk about giving things up today. I'd like to talk about giving something forward. If you're a consistent, regular giver, we thank you and appreciate it. It is very much needed. If you're not a regular contributor, we ask that you prayerfully consider doing so. You can give by mail, by email, by cash out, Venmo, and in person. There's an offering plate outside the door if you'd like to place your offering there. And it's with those gifts and ties that we can offer something for people during Lent. If you go to God for me in prayer. Loving God, we're thankful for your people and for your church. We pray that you will bless this offering to your honor and glory. Be with the gift and the giver, that you multiply it and use it to touch other people. These things we ask in the holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Let the wicked abandon their ways and the sinful their schemes. Let them return to the Lord who may have mercy on them, to our God who is generous with forgiveness. And uh, 1 Corinthians, no temptation has seized you that isn't common for people, but God is faithful and won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. Instead, with the temptation, God will also supply a way out so that you will be able to endure it. This is the word of God. So today, instead of two or three big points, have a lot of little points, but they're pretty brief, pretty easy, I think. I was lucky, I, I think I just get easy scriptures for some reason, I don't know. So I begin by asking God again, recognizing again God's presence, praying as Pete did so well that we can have some moments with God and lay our, tent, lay our distractions down for a little bit, that God may speak to us, that God may speak through these words. I pray that God, that people will hear God and not me, that this is what God wants you to hear. And so I invite God in, invite God to speak, and pray that God's word will find the soil that it needs in our lives to bear fruit in our lives for ourselves and those around us. Amen? Amen. So these are one, one of these is an Old Testament reading and one is a New Testament me- reading. And I felt like they really had some easy messages for us to grasp and apply. So Isaiah starts out in in the first verse in chapter 55 saying, All you who are thirsty, I don't know if there's a subconscious suggestion there or not. (laughs) I don't know. All of you who are thirsty come to the water like I just did. And so, of course, that's not just literal. It, It means all of you who need from God come to God because God will provide it. And so we try to model that at our church. That's why we start with with a big, extravagant welcome, so that hopefully no one questions, should I be here? Do they really want me to be here? Am I going to fit in here? We, We hope there's none of that. That's why our communion table is open. So you don't have to be a member of our denomination or our church or have been baptized or meet any qualifications at all to participate in communion, even though you're not coming up to the table literally at this point. Maybe someday we can. But the point is that everyone is welcome. So, you know, we don't have anyone out there policing the juice and, you know, seeing who gets it and who doesn't. We just want to follow God's example of being open and welcome. Because God is open and inclusive. God doesn't exclude anyone. Amen? So we don't exclude anyone either. That's why I said earlier that we're all God's children. And so it says, whoever has no money, come, buy food and eat. Without money, at no cost, buy wine and milk. And there have been plenty of times in my life when that would have spoken to me. Because, you know, um, there were times when we had uh, hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. And I mean the 99 cent hot dogs and the 3 for a dollar macaroni and cheese. Mix that together, and that's an entree, if you need it to be. 
You know, I know about ramen noodles and all that. So there are plenty of times when if I had needed to be able to donate a certain amount of money to the church, then I wouldn't have felt welcome because I didn't have that sometimes in my life. But it's not just income, you know, it's any other status, belongings, what you drive, what job you have or don't have. None of that is important in, in God's welcome, in God's inclusion. God's riches, such as compassion, innate harmony, healing presence, and unconditional love, are available for all of us. And since they're available for all of us, that means God gives them to us. Why? Not just so that we're enriched, which is really good, but so that we can share those gifts with other people and be those things to other people so that other people realize, like we do, how inclusive God is and how God's love matters to them and that they're part of God's family. So we don't, there are no special qualifications like income or belongings or prestige or position or anything like that. In fact, the scripture says, why spend money for what isn't food and your earnings for what doesn't satisfy? And I think we can all think of times in our lives when we have spent either money or resources or energy or whatever on things and realize later, that didn't really matter all that much. I probably could have been better off, and I don't mean guilt, as you know, but I, just, to, just to challenge myself gently and lovingly, you know, I probably could have done that a little better. I probably could have focused on this more instead of that. <clears throat> I could have focused more on children instead of work, you know, things like that. Loved ones instead of whatever was occupying my time. So it, it's, an, it's an invitation for us to think about what are we spending our time and resources and effort on? Are they things that last? Do they include things like remembering and spending time in God's presence, God's love? What do we need to do to make the most of God's gifts? Well, the scripture goes on to say, listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Enjoy the richest of feasts. Listen and come to me. Listen and you will live. Well, if we're going to enjoy the, rich, the, the richest of feasts, since Jerry's not here today, I think that includes chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> that immediately came to mind when I read that scripture. But listening. God wants us to listen to God's word. That's one of the first things we need to do to think about how can I do better. And that does not mean a focus on I'm so bad, I'm so terrible. You know, we don't do that here. It's just to focus on how could I be a little better than I was yesterday. Not comparing me to anyone else, just comparing me to myself the day before, the month before, the year before, whatever. How could I do a little better? To feel God's love a little more, to spread God's love a little bit more. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. So whatever comes into us, not just food, but anything, what, what we allow to influence us, is it good? Does it bring us closer to God? Is it uplifting? Or is it bringing us down? If it's bringing us down, why? Is it something we need to get rid of? Something we need to pay less attention to? Something we need to change our perspective on, maybe? Those are things we could spend some moments reflecting on. Come to me, listen, and you will live. So if we listen to God's word, we're going to have a more enriched life, a fuller life. So the first thing we need to do is listen. God speaks to us every day throughout the day. There's an old song I remember when I was little. I don't know how many of you remember, turn your radio on. God's always broadcasting, but God leaves it up to us. God doesn't force, us in our, force it in our head. We can be open to it, find, look for it, listen to it. We can tune in. Or we can tune out. We can have a lot of influences in our lives, like I often do, that keep me so busy I'm not listening. But God's still speaking, amen? We have God's messages in creation. Some of us like to go out in nature and experience God and listen to God that way. We have the Bible. We can read the physical Bible. We can open it on our phones, right? Anytime, day or night. We have... The words of Jesus, of course. If you're reading the Bible, by the way, I think the words of Jesus are the most important ones, okay? 
We have the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our conscience that leads us. You can do a little better than that. The, the Holy Spirit that leads us to forgive when we don't want to hear that. We don't always want to hear what God says, you know, and sometimes that's why we don't listen, right? We don't want to hear it. We have a pastor. We have friends sometimes, family members sometimes, who can speak God's word to us. God says, I will make an everlasting, well, in Isaiah said it, speaking for God, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful loyalty to David. Look, I made him a witness to the peoples, a prince and commander of peoples. So everlasting means faithful, right? Permanent, ongoing. The covenant with God that God offers us cannot be broken unless we choose to break it. God won't break it. God doesn't leave us. God doesn't say, okay, done. You've crossed the line, I'm finished with you, go away. We don't need to meet any special conditions. You know, the whole unconditional love thing, right? There are no conditions we need to make. There's nothing we can do. You've heard this before from J.R., one of the best lines he's ever said, in my opinion. There's nothing we can do to get God to love us anymore, care about us anymore, pay attention to us anymore than God already does. There's nothing we can do to get God to love us any less. Because it's not about us. God decided it. We don't have a choice. Okay? We can ignore it. We can turn our back on it. But it's still there. We can turn back any time. Because that's what God has decided. That's who God is. God is already loving us, loving us, not waiting on us to get everything in order. You know, sometimes we think, well, I'll do this when, when I get this done and this done and this done. And I'm praying this much and I'm reading this much scripture. We can do it that way if we want to, but that's not God's demand. People may have told us that stuff was necessary, but they were wrong. Most of us are wrong some of the time. <laughs> Even some preachers are wrong. I didn't say our pastor, I said some preachers. <laughs> but God is not waiting on us to get everything in order before God will fully love us and fully gift us with what God has promised. God just waits patiently for us to say yes. God waits patiently for us to tune in and listen and think about how we can apply that word in our lives. Then God can use us as a witness. I told you you were going to hear some of those words again. But I don't mean you have to stand out on Lakeshore Drive with a megaphone. That's one way, not the only way. Being a witness means being willing to tell people what God has done for you. But not just tell people. You know, what we do says a lot more than what we say. It means, how do we treat people? How do people feel when they're in our presence? Now, we can't necessarily control their feelings, but if we smile at them and say good morning, even if they're not, you know, our boss or our coworker, any person in the building we see at work, if we smile, if we're pleasant, you know, if we notice them, some people just want to be noticed. You know, some people may go through their job and nobody ever takes the time to say good morning to them or ask them how are you and wait for them to answer. You know, not how are you and walking away. I, I've done that. Not perfect. But sometimes I stop and say how are you and look at the person and wait for them to answer. So they know I really care what their answer is. I'm not, I didn't just give them a split second and say fine as I walk by. I'm using an example from my own life, okay? It's easier. But if people feel like we took the time to talk to them for a moment and actually care what they said, to respond, to listen, maybe follow up the next day. You know, you said your son was sick, or you said this, you said that. How are things going? That can mean a lot to a person. Just one tiny example. You can probably think of many others. But we can be a witness just by how we treat people. The, the verse talked about being a commander. We may not be a literal commander of people, some of us may be it sometimes. We may have people that report to us at work or students. But people are influenced by us and may want to follow us and want advice from us if they feel like the advice comes from a good place. If they see what we're like, they might want to be like that. They might want to know, what is it that makes you in a good mood, even though what just happened in your life, you're still at work, you're still saying good morning to me and still caring what I think, and yet look what you've just been through, wow. There's something there I wanna have in my life, because I don't have that, they might say, they might think. 
And by the way, they may never tell you. God doesn't always give us the gift of knowing when we've influenced someone and touched their life in a profound way. So can you, can you think of anybody who's ever influenced you or inspired you and you didn't know them and they didn't know you? The verse said, look, you will call a nation you don't know. A nation you don't know will run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. You know, when people ask you something, they could be wondering, they could be wanting advice from you to see what you're going to say because it's something they think they need in their life. They see something in you that they would like to have for themselves, but they may not say, tell me about God or witness to me. It may be a simple question that you would never even realize how much they're listening or they may just watch you you know they may just think back to what you're like when they're around you and how they feel when they're around you not that you're responsible for their feelings but sometimes you can have a better impact or a not so great impact <clears throat> so even people we don't know may be inspired if we're doing the right thing just trying to do the right thing, not necessarily knowing whom it's influencing or really caring whom it's influencing, just doing the right thing regardless of who notices or who doesn't notice, not to be noticed. People will want to know how you have things like compassion and innate harmony inside even when there's um, chaos around you. Not that we have that 100% of the time, but when we do have it, it'll be noticeable. When we have a healing presence, either for ourselves or for others, when we have unconditional love, when we reach out to someone in love, even though maybe a lot of people wouldn't in that moment, even when it's a difficult thing to do, even when we don't want to forgive, to be nice anyway. I don't mean let people run over you or abuse you, though. No one does it perfectly, but we can lead by example. When people see you and see me and hear you and hear me, the question is, do they see and hear Christ-like qualities? It won't be all the time, but at least sometimes. More often than not, let's say. Not that we never mess up. Do they see and hear something they want to be like? The scripture said, let the wicked abandon their ways and the sinful their schemes. Let them return to the Lord who may have mercy on them, to our God who is generous with forgiveness. So if someone does come to us and say, look, I really messed up the other day, I'm sorry. How do we handle that? Do we handle it with grace? Or do we talk about how much they did mess up? Do we say what we're thinking? Or do we try to say what we want God to say to us when we go to God and say, God, I messed up? And I'm asking myself that too. If we show, if first of all, if we think about how God has been forgiving to us, it can help us be forgiving to others, or at least it does for me. By being forgiving and loving, we can inspire people to return to God because they had a good experience coming to us when they needed mercy. It says, no temptation has seized you that isn't common for people. So when we go through struggles, we need to remember the struggle may be very real, but it's not something no one else has ever gone through. You know, for me, when I start thinking about how irritating the traffic is or how I'm so tired of rain that I don't know what to do, I stop and think, okay, I'm getting wet and this... I don't know why this dog can't just go ahead and poop. <laughs> you know, there's a cartoon on Facebook that shows Noah outside the ark with an umbrella and a dog a distance away, <laughs> saying, I wish you would hurry up. <laughs> I identify with that. Doesn't matter that it's raining. They're going to take as long as they take. Where was I going with that? <laughs> What does that have to do with the scripture? Hmm. Lost it. Anyway, it said, 
No temptation has seized you that isn't common for people. But God is faithful and won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. So that means that what happens to us has happened to other people too. And uh, I know where it was. It came back. So even when I'm out there in the rain with the dog, or when I'm stuck in traffic or whatever, sometimes I stop and think, but you know, my city isn't being bombed. And that's not meant for me to feel guilty about anything, but just to remember, wow, whatever I'm going through, and of course I've gone through things a lot worse than being out in the rain, but I can always think about there are still blessings. There's still a lot of blessings. No matter how bad it may get, there's still blessings. And so being tempted, being frustrated, sometimes responding in a way that I shouldn't have responded, is something that is common for all people. But God can help us deal with those temptations a little better. And the next time, maybe deal with it a little better. Then we might backslide a little bit, but God will help us improve and get better. God will supply a way out so that we'll be able to endure it. In fact, sometimes God puts people in our lives that we can just be open and honest with. You know, someone who will keep it to themselves, someone we can go to and vent to and just say, look, this is how I feel. It's not pretty. It's not going to be Christ-like today. I just need to vent and get it off my chest. You know, sometimes we need someone we can do that with because we need to let it go, you know. Someone who gives us permission, you don't need to be Christ-like right now, just be honest. Yeah. Get it out. And then, I'm not going to tell anybody, it's just between you and me. That sometimes is what we need to do. Because we're all tempted, we all miss the mark of being loving sometimes. Even I do. Not very often, but it happens. Okay? <laughs> Jerry's not here, so you're not going to be tempted to ask him for examples. <laughs> I told you before, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> You'll miss lunch and probably dinner. Because I was kidding. It's not, almost never happens. But the word says that even though we are tempted, God does not allow us to be tempted beyond our means to overcome it with God's help. We might not be able to overcome it by ourselves, but with God's help we can. Sometimes God invites us to be that sister or brother that lends the helping hand to another person to help them get through it. So how can we work on missing that mark a little, off, a little less often? I want to go back to something I said earlier. God offers us gifts that can help us through those hard times when temptation is the most tempting it can be, when emotions get high and patience wears thin. You remember those times? Maybe yesterday? God gives us many gifts, but I want to focus on four as I get ready to close. Compassion, innate harmony, healing presence, and unconditional love. I want to invite you to do a brief meditation. And this is something you can do anytime. You don't have to be with me. You don't have to be at church. You don't have to be tuned into a worship service to do this. I want you to close your eyes for a moment if you feel comfortable. And if you don't, it's fine to leave them open. I want you to imagine that you're hanging out with Jesus in these, these days near the end of his earthly ministry as he's wrapping up his messages and maybe preaching his, his last important key points to the people in the temple, I want you to imagine that you're hanging out with him and he just asks you, what's been troubling you lately? And you might say something like, well, I've been wanting to be more like you. I want to follow your example. And Jesus might say, okay, I want you to remember four things. And if you remember these things, the other gifts I give you the qualities I have that you want to be like, patience, gratitude, understanding, those are going to come naturally. So first, I want you to remember compassion. I want you to remember my vast oceanic compassion for all people. I always want the best for them, for all of them. I want them to have joy and compassion for themselves and others. I want you to focus on being compassionate, not just to others, but to yourself. Invite my amazing compassion into your own heart and your own being and just feel it. Welcome it. Make a place for it in your heart. 
Allow compassion to soften the parts of you that might not feel compassionate. Remember, compassion is for you, and that will help you have it for others. Spend a moment now reflecting on my compassion and how you can carry that gift to others. <coughs> So the second gift I want you to remember is my innate harmony. And realize you have that gift too. This is a gift that allows you to be at peace inside your own heart because you know I am always with you. That I always love you and that can get you through anything even though you will suffer at times. You will. There will be storms of life around you at times but they cannot take my love and my peace away from you. Accept my gift of harmony into your heart, your spirit, and trust that it can never be taken away. Spend a moment reflecting on my harmony, my peace that I give you that nothing in the world can give or take away. In addition to compassion and innate harmony, I want you to remember my healing presence. I am your healer even when nothing else is or no one else is. I'm not going to heal all earthly ills. You're not in heaven yet. But I heal your soul, your spirit, and I never let you be alone. Because of my healing presence in your spirit, you can be a healing presence for others, but you won't always know you're doing it. You can leave that up to me. Just offer them love, forgiveness, and the compassion that I gave you earlier, the innate harmony that I mentioned earlier, tell them they can have it too, and you will help others feel more at peace and less disturbed. If you're willing, you can be part of my healing presence for other people. Spend a moment reflecting on my healing that you've experienced in your life and think about ways you might could be healing for other people, even in small ways. Compassion, innate harmony, healing presence, finally, Remember my unconditional love. Always come back to that. There's nothing you can do to get me to love you anymore. I always love you 100%. Always have and always will. It never gets down to 99%. Ever. Nothing and no one, not even you, can change my mind about that. It's who I am. If you know and believe that I love you unconditionally, then it can help you love others. It won't be unconditional. You're not me but you will know that I love them. And so you can find it in your heart to love them. I don't expect you to love perfectly, leave that to me. But trust that my love will always be with you and reflect on being loved so much that it's beyond words because it is and it can never change. Reflect on how that can help you get through anything. So, as you come back from your time with Jesus, remember you can do this exercise anytime. And it doesn't matter if you remember all the exact words. That's not important. I encourage you to do it every single day if you can. Do I remember that? No. But do it when you think about it. Do it when you feel stressed. It can make a difference when I do it. Maybe it will for you. The scripture said we are not tempted beyond our means. There's always a way out. For me, sometimes this is the way out. Remembering God's gifts. The time that you just spent is holy ground. Anytime you invite the presence and gifts of God into your life, your day, your moment is holy ground. When you realize that, it might help life stress a little. 
It might help you have a little bit more patience. It might help you have a little bit more mercy on someone else. Because you let Jesus share the burden with you instead of trying to carry it alone, which you were never meant to do in the first place. You will still have troubles and stress and temptations. This won't take them away, and there's nothing I can give you that will. But it may help you through. And God's Word certainly can help you through. Let's enjoy the holy ground moment a little longer as we sing and get ready to go into our time of communion. Sunday in Lent, a feast day, let us remember God's advice about life on earth. Help us to be better followers of Jesus and followers of the way by using that advice as we encounter others on this earth. Let us remember that God wants to have a relationship with us, that God wants us to say yes to that relationship that God is always there for us, even in those tough times, that we are not alone, that God wants us to have a rich and fulfilling life here on earth, and he will provide for us, that God will provide us what we need, that may even be a way out of any situation we encounter. Let us be nourished this morning by God's steadfast and unconditional love for us, and let that love flow through us. Let us be a conduit for that love and let it flow out of us to those we meet and those who are in our lives. And before we embark on this meal, let us not forget that this is God's table and that all of us, no matter where you are on your journey, are welcome to partake of this spiritual meal. There is no fence between this meal and you. Now, because we allow ourselves to feel separated from God, because we may allow ourselves to build in our own minds a fence, let's take them down. Let's prepare ourselves for receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion by reflecting on those things that cause us to feel separated from God, from ourselves, from others, with a moment of private and personal confession. Let us pause. joy and my blessing this morning to let you know that God has heard your confession and you are forgiven. Thank you. Thanks Thanks to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Creator God, Mother and Father of us all, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit onto these elements 
so that they may allow us to experience in our hearts and in our bodies your steadfast and unconditional love for us and allow us to join into communion with you, with others, and with your creation that you have entrusted to us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Let's partake of communion meal together. When the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together and feel the unconditional love of God. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, let us drink together and experience the unconditional love of God. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. God, for all you have done for us and for all you will do for us, we say thanks. And we remember and experience your steadfast love and compassion for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So thank you, Pete, and audiovisual staff, office staff, and Phil, choir, everyone who's had a part in making this worship service what it is, we're grateful. Thank you to all of us who joined, all of you who joined us in person, by Facebook, by Zoom. We're glad you're with us. And if you're on social media, I hope that you have said hello in the Facebook chat or the Zoom chat to let us know that you're there. We appreciate that. So, in closing, this might be a bulletin that, that you could take with you because the readings are so easy to understand and so relevant. I encourage you to keep it and think about those readings. As you go through your week, I hope you will take those gifts with you of compassion, innate harmony, healing presence, and unconditional love. And if you don't remember all of them, I think God will help you remember whichever one you might need to work on at that moment. So let us pray. God, we thank you for your presence, all of your gifts. We thank you for this worship service, this family, this church. We ask you to guide not only this church, but all of your churches, all of your people, all of your children around the world. We ask you to let us be your light and to keep reminding us that we know that we can make it. We know that we can stand, no matter what may come our way, because our life is in your hand. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and see.
pray that you will know God's blessing is with you this week. And whenever you feel like you can't make it, I submit that may be because you're trying to make it on your own. And God didn't mean for you to do that. So I pray you'll reflect and remember these words that you can make it because your life is in God's hands, which it always is. Amen? Amen. Go in peace.